Hi everyone, it's Phil here from Ashland Leather and check out this Tony the Ant. I think it has a really incredible patina that has developed on there. I wanted to show you how you can get any veg tan leather to sort of have this same sort of luster. And you can get this kind of luster with a spoon and I'd like to show you how to do that with just a spoon and some water. So this particular Tony the Ant was sent back to me from a customer because they wanted me to see just how nicely it's aged. And this one is from Jeff G. Thanks so much for sending this, Jeff. It's actually really exciting for me to see how all these leathers were. And that's sort of the whole reason I started making leather wallets in the first place is I just loved seeing the transformation over time. And you can really see on this particular Tony the Ant how the color has darkened and it's got a bright, shiny luster, although Jeff has applied a little bit of Saphir Cordovan cream to this one. You can expect the Shell Cordovan on the reverse side to age a little bit this way just naturally. Let me give you a look at the inside also because the inside card holders have also aged very nicely on this particular Tony the Ant. So I've got a little pattern piece here. This is actually a Fat Herbie card holder in the reverse Shell Cordovan. Take a look how it starts here. It's a little bit more of like a matte finish just to start off before any polishing has been done. And let's get a little comparison of these two together. So you can see this is about as light as it gets and this is about as dark as it gets. That's why I picked this piece to show you. And it's sort of all kind of darkens to this color naturally. But take a look at the luster and just observe how shiny the, the wall it is on the right compared to the pattern piece here. So let's get into the polishing here. I wanted to give you a way to do this at home with basically everything you already have, if you have a spoon that is. So all you're gonna need for this is a spoon and then just a little bit of water. And this is just water straight out of the tap. So I just dipped my finger into the water and that's all the amount of water that you're probably gonna need to use. You don't need to put much on here. And next I'm just gonna take a spoon here, use the back side of the spoon and give it a little bit of friction. You don't have to use too much pressure and this should fill in the grain on this reverse cordovan. So I actually did two coats of water and two quick polishes with the spoon. And you can see already how the color is starting to darken. And we've filled in the grain just a little bit on this reverse cordovan. What we're doing here is simulating the polishing action that will happen naturally in your pan pocket. So this is how you can expect to see a wallet wear in, just like this Tony the Ant here. So now I wanna let this dry for just a few minutes and it should lighten up a little bit in color. And while we wait for that to dry, I'm gonna apply some Saphir Cordovan Cream to another part of the wallet here so we can get a comparison of how this fills in the grain. Now this method of using a spoon to polish in a piece of cordovan might seem a little unfamiliar, but you may have heard of people using a deer bone to fill in the shell cordovan and to polish a lot of different leathers. What we're doing here with the Saphir Cordovan Cream is sort of simulating that same concept with the deer bone. The reason people use the deer bones is because there's some natural oils that are in the bone itself that will help to fill in the grain. And I'm sort of replacing the oils from that bone with the uh, saphir here. And you can see how much more fill that the saphir has added. The saphir has really filled in a lot of the grain here because there is a high amount of wax in this saphir cordovan cream. So the leather here has been drying for only a couple minutes. It hasn't really been too long, maybe three minutes. So the right side here, we would put the water. It's starting to lighten back up again. You can really see how filled in this section here where I've applied the waxy cordovan cream. 
The next step I'm going to take here is to take a horsehair brush and give it a little brushing. It should restore a little bit more luster to the leather here. And then I might repeat the process with the water and spoon a couple more times. So I've repeated the process of that water and the spoon and a little brushing four times now. And you can really see how much more filled in the grain character is just from a little bit of water and pressure and the friction from the backside of that smooth spoon. We also see here where the zephyr has been added. It's starting to look kind of similar here in terms of luster compared to just the water polishing. Take a look there, maybe you can see it a little bit better at this angle. It's definitely a little bit more filled in. I'm going to try to give you a closer look here. You can definitely see a luster difference where the water and saphir have been applied. And the water again is around the back edge here where the saphir is just in this little section right there. You can sort of see where the luster stops on both of them. And I find that really fascinating. So again, all we're doing here is sort of expediting the patina process. And it's really the same way that this incredible Tony the Ant is worn in. I just love the way the, that the luster develops on the shell cordovan, in particular on the raw shell and the reverse shell. So if you want to expedite any piece of veg tan leather, this process should work quite well for you. I found it works really, really well on the reverse cordovan. In fact, we actually offer an option where we do something called hand glazing. We don't actually water polish it. We use a different product and we get a similar result. And it sort of gives you this nice glassy sort of wet look on the surface of the leather. So if you really like this sort of wet, polished, shiny look, you don't need much more than perhaps a little bit of tap water and just a spoon. Maybe eat your cereal and then polish some leather. Uh, it tends to do a really nice job. If you have any questions about polishing leather, definitely let me know. We've got a little bit of experience with doing that. And uh, I happen to enjoy the, the water polishing very much. I actually do that on my shell cordovan boots. All I do is apply a little bit of water and then just brush it. I tend to get the life back out of it. I've noticed that more product you put on the leather, the less nice and natural it looks. And that's totally subjective but it tends to be a little bit better to do less to your leather in my experience. So hopefully you'd enjoyed this demo. If you have any questions, again, definitely let me know, leave a comment. And until next time, hope you have a good one.